Oh dear. Hello and happy new year. If you're listening to this on time, if if not, happy Tuesday or whatever day it might be. Welcome back to another episode of Oh Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage. And hey, we did it. A full year of Oh Dear. Here we are, first recording of 2022, coming to you from Communal Creative Studios in the heart of downtown Red Deer. I'm Ted Emmett. Thank you for joining us for episode 22. With me here in studio, as always, the holliest guy in town, Dustin Moore. Welcome back for, well, hopefully another year. And let me say, I had a holly Christmas, and it was good. But actually, my week kind of started shitty. I got in a little fender bender. I don't know. My first accident, I don't know, really know if you call it an accident, being the kind of cushion of a T-bone in the middle of an intersection, but I'm sure happy I have a great insurance company. I'll tell you that for free. And NFL playoffs are coming up, so. Well, they're probably already going by the time this comes out. And see, I told you, you don't even have to ask Dustin how it's going because he's going to tell you anyways. That's why I specifically didn't that time. Save us three seconds. Hey, time is money. And to his left, a man whose voice is like a software update because every time it pops up, we all think, not now. Kevin Walsh, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Happy I, New Year. <laughs> we had a team not meeting. Now. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> we had a team meeting last weekend and, uh, you know, by this, the way you were talking, I thought the short jokes were going to stop and they did. So, thank you. But uh, this isn't much better. But I'm fantastic, <laughs> Ted, because today my wife was listening to our most recent, our last podcast and uh, one of my jokes made her spit out her lunch. So, I'm feeling pretty good. Are you sure she just doesn't have COVID? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh, what did, yeah, what did we learn in the interview that yeah. we're going to have in a bit is no, just go with it, accept it. Yeah. Anyway, there's a, a little foreshadowing. And last but not least, kind, generous, thoughtful, witty, and handsome are all words. Anyways, Ryan Lund, how's it going? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Uh, New year, same Ryan. Okay. <laughs> that saved us a, a lot of seconds. So over on the couch with an absolutely stunning hairdo tonight. Coworker Aaron, thanks for coming back. Uh, you just took an absolute shellacking when we recorded that one year episode for no reason over your hair. So thank you for coming back. No, hey, it. Uh, my mom actually called me today and she'd listened to the podcast and she was like, what did, what was wrong with your hair? And I was like, nothing, I was just mean to a tiny child and then everybody made fun of my hair. So another apology to the athlete, Kevin Strybosch. <laughs> It was pretty on the nose. Like, I don't have great hair, so I guess really I'll take it. But, and again, if anyone wants to sponsor Aaron's hair at the very end, Aaron's hair by, we can have that nice recording, Aaron's hair by your name here. Yeah, I'm open to it. So, hit up Ted in the DMs. Yeah. <laughs> Get after us at, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Get outside and yell. Yeah, hopefully you listen to the last episode or like half of these jokes already aren't going aren't gonna to hit at all, but... As always, a shout out to Ryan and Riley from Communal Creative Studios. It's been a while actually since we've had them both here in studio. They had a very busy December and a happy 30th birthday to Ryan as well. It's all downhill from here, buddy. Oh yeah, thanks, thanks, Ted. That's awesome. <laughs> I uh, I feel feel a little bit older, but uh, I think this next year is going to be fantastic. <laughs> I'm just glad glad I'm here with you boys. Did you? Apparently, for his 30th birthday, he smoked 30 packs of cigarettes to celebrate. <laughs> well, voice acting, not not in your future. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I had quite a hangover from my birthday. I had quite quite a bash. So I, oh. uh, I'm, I'm just glad you boys are keeping me on for another year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Wow. You know what? I enjoyed that. So thank you. Lots to get to this episode. Obviously, we're going to talk about 2021, uh, the new year, all of that crap. We have Jenna and Amy as well, who came in from Bullskit Comedy. We're going to hear from them in just a bit. So with that, let's head into the Glad Game. The Glad Game is brought to you by Louis Corvo of Warren Sinclair, LLP, a central Alberta law firm dedicated to helping all its clients achieve their business and personal goals. Learn more at warrensinclair.com. And so we're going to do something a little different this year with the Glad Game. Instead of going around and everyone picking something that they're they're glad about, we're going to pick one thing and kind of discuss it. And you know, Dustin, why don't you lead us off for the first one of 2022? Yeah, thanks, Ted. I think, you know, as we move into 2022 and come, come away from a holiday season that, you know, for the most part was ravaged by COVID, a lot of great things happened in, in Alberta and specifically in central Alberta. You know, everyone's familiar with the Salvation Army and their, their kettle uh, fundraiser raised $217,000 this year, which 
I don't know if I've never seen it in the past, but to me, that's a, a huge number for, for them, especially in a time where people are struggling a little bit and, and jobs are being lost. And so it was great to see that people are giving back through that. It's actually, it's up by almost $30,000 from the year before too. And that's just in like Red Deer and Central Alberta alone. So that's a lot. When you just think of people, I guess they're jingling the bells at, at the stores and that I, I have to assume there's a little more fundraising than, than just that, but Either way, that is a, a lot of money and pretty impressive to be almost $30,000 more. I think it just goes to highlight the Central Alberta community as a whole. I think, uh, you know, over the last number of years, I, I've noticed that Central Alberta just seems to very, be a very generous community. And uh, I think we're really lucky to have a lot of individuals in the city that are willing to give. And uh, even to those that just get five bucks, I mean, it adds up really quick. So I'm astounded at those numbers. You know, when you guys kind of mentioned that, I was like, is that for the province? But for, for just Central Alberta, that's pretty incredible. And I think just to spin off the Salvation Army, because obviously they, they've been doing this for, you know, how many years? But more specifically, you know, some of the groups that we've engaged with, with the podcast, I, I believe episode 19 guests, Kara Horsley and Miles Peak, uh, one for Mama's Mama's, Mama's for Mama's and the Outreach Center. I know the Outreach Center with their adoptive family program raised over 80,000 and helped over like 180 families and, and Mama's for Mama's their first year here, Kara and, and her group brought them here to Central Alberta and helped over like 30 families. So that's that's over 200 families that may had may have had some insecurities over the holiday season which we all know can be a tough time for some people and and they got to actually experience a good holiday season in, in such a shitty time with covid ramping up and and some possible loneliness and insecurities all right so good a nice singular ish focused glad game but i think that's a that's a huge one and something that's nice to see as you get into the January blues and whatnot. Before we get to our featured guests, we're gonna change up things from our usual order because who's gonna stop me? So we're, <laughs> we're gonna get into our first tourism Red Deer spotlight of 2022. And this is gonna be another generic one again, because now that the, the deep freeze or that deep freeze that we experienced uh, late December, early January is over, it's a little easier to get outside again. And as Rene said on, on the last episode, there's so many different things to do in Red Deer. So we're gonna talk about our favorite outdoor activities, whether they're free or cost something, either way, I mean, we could start with the obvious because just to get out of the house for an hour, you can walk or if you're really ambitious, run on uh, something we always talk about is the incredible parks and trail system in Red Deer. So anyone have like a, we're not going to ask Erin because she's going to forget the name of where her favorite spot is in front of a, the tourism Red Deer executive director. Does anyone have a favorite spot to go? To be fair, I really thought that that would get cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you thought wrong. Yeah, for me, it's Heritage Ranch. I mean, we've talked about it before for summertime activities, but it is equally as great in the wintertime. They have some cool Christmas lights set up along the path through the trees down uh, into the forest. And when you make that loop, uh, but my favorite part is is taking my daughter there still to feed the horses carrots. And, and she just absolutely loves that. Uh, it's a great outing hour two hours get out of the house the deep freeze like you don't realize how you know bored you are until you're able to go do that those activities and it's like man we're just stuck in the house for two weeks let's get out and do some sledding or go to heritage ranch or bower ponds but i'm sure you guys will touch on a couple of those one of our favorite places to go as a family is uh, riverbend in the winter there's some great trails down there to walk on at your own pace with the family uh there's some really cool kind of different structures built out of the woods and there's actually one spot where um you can stand there with birds in your hand i don't know what the birds are called but the, like little chickadees or whatever but there's hundreds of them and they all come and like eat out of your hand which is really cool for the oh, kids no thank but uh when and and in the winter it's beautiful but in the winter specifically there's some great cross-country ski trails in and around R river bend going from i think 10 kilometers or maybe longer to like a beginner around a field uh so we've taken our our kids there before and it's really easy to rent cross-country skis and it's a really great way to introduce kids or yourself to cross-country skiing and there's a lot of different paths and different ability levels so you can go from expert to beginner so highly recommend it it's it's not super expensive to rent those skis for a couple hours and a great way to spend a day especially in beautiful weather uh yeah for me uh this year it's probably three mile bend uh, my girlfriend's got a couple dogs so we spend a lot of time uh walking them and three mile bend's my favorite spot to go uh trails are beautiful out there it's usually pretty busy too especially if the weather's nice so you get to uh, run into quite a few people that you know it's a good, uh, good spot to let your dogs run, run free off leash. So 
I would say um, Bauer Ponds is always a winner. I know Ted, you, I, and uh, the athlete go quite a bit. Go for um, go for skates, and uh, I don't want to blow up our spot too much. But usually after like seven, eight o'clock, it's really quiet there. But they've got the lights, and it's it's just a great way to kill an hour, skate like nine kilometers, and just like shoot the shit and have a lot of fun. So that's definitely kind of my go to uh, winter activity, especially during the week. Yeah, I would say you hit on all of them. And yeah, me me and Aaron and Uncle Meat, as I like to call them, you know, and I think I encourage everyone to do this, especially in the winter is we have a bit of a walking group and, and it's you, the three of us plus whoever else wants to come. But you have that thing where you feel like once or twice a week, someone just says, hey, let's go for a walk. So we'll go to Bower Ponds, walk around, skate around, whatever. And it's, it's a, a great way to get out of the house. But really, again, when you even COVID aside, you get to the age where sometimes you have to work a little harder to be social and stay in touch with people, but you go and you, you know, you talk about whatever. It's basically free therapy too. And just two little hints. My favorite thing to do, we've only done it a couple times, but is actually to start at Heritage Ranch with your skates, you know, throw it in a bag, whatever, walk to Bower Ponds, go skate for a half hour, 45 minutes, and then walk back. So it's a, what, 20 minutes, 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back. But if you're looking to get some exercise and just get out and enjoy some people's company, that's a great way to do it. And a little secret about about Riverbend if you want to walk or if you're crazy like Uncle Meat and Run. The other side of the road there is you can walk like there's all the, the little bit harder cross country ski trails there but it's a really nice walk in there too. I don't recommend it when it's like pure ice because you're going to fall pretty hard but if you want. Yeah there's some hills in yeah, there. Yeah if you want a bit of a, a hill walk a little bit more exercise uh, and it's a lot of fun you can go a couple different ways. So there's my, my two tips as far as uh, walking running trails. So here's something else I think we should do for one of our spotlights. And I'm not going to like it, I think. I don't know if anyone's going to like it, but the Alberta Sports Hall of Fame also rents out snowshoes. So you can go snowshoeing kind of all around Heritage Ranch. Uh, and I just, I just like the very first time I remember, it was a long time ago going cross-country skiing. I hated it. I think I'm going to hate snowshoeing because I've let myself get so out of shape, but I think it's going to be an experience that we, I think we've got to do it. Just a note on that, you can also do horseshoeing at uh, Carrie. Wood Nature Center too, which is a great experience. They got horseshoe horse pits there? Thing? <laughs> snowshoeing. That's a summer activity. Yeah. <laughs> they might have horseshoes there. Yeah, those they, yeah, they have snowshoes. Sink right down. <laughs> <No. snow. laughs> those would be like the worst things to wear in the wintertime. If you really want to yeah. fuck with someone, take them yeah. horseshoeing through this. In the winter. If yeah. you really want to lose weight, wear some yeah. horseshoes in the wintertime. No, I think I, we go and we do a draw and one person has to wear horseshoes instead of <laughs> snowshoes. <laughs> I love snowshoeing. We do it a lot. Uh, the past few years, it's either been too cold or there hasn't been enough snow when it's been warm enough, but I'm a big fan. So not something I've only done it in the mountains, but uh, something I'd le- definitely love to do around Red Deer as we get some more snow this year. And Tourism Red Deer has all of these laid out on their brand new website if you need ideas. And one I saw takes me back to the very first episode because we talked about it, but tobogganing is a big one. You know, you can do it at Bower Ponds. And of course, Missioner Hill is, I've never actually been on it, but I know that's like the go-to hill. Yeah, for me, I think it's just uh, building snow forts and uh, having snowball fights. I mean, the conditions have to be just right for both those things when the snow is nice and sticky. And uh, it was it was good today. Threw a couple snowballs today and uh, my aim's still pretty good. So <laughs> if anyone wants to uh, have a fight, just, just DM me, I guess. <laughs> just get at us at, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just call us out. Hey, there's no us. Yeah, this. yeah. This, 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 this is, is your you. this is your fight. Yeah. Guys, we're a team. We agreed all for one, one for all. That was the three musketeers. <laughs> I think you're a little confused. Oh yeah, I did watch I did watch that movie over Christmas time. That's right. <laughs> and for all those winter activities, they have a great list of if you you literally are just looking for something to do on the weekend, go to visit reddeer.com. It's right there. Things to do winter activities. Uh, so yeah, that is our latest tourism red deer spotlight. And just like that, it's time to go to our special guests. Go little rock star. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So our, uh, our improv skills are about to really be put to the test here because we have Jenna Goldade and Amy Erlinson from Bullskit Comedy here with us tonight. So first off, thank you both of you for coming and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks for having us. So before we do anything, before I even let Lund talk, apparently, we're right away we're going to do a warm-up game. Oh, or you're going to okay. lead us through a warm-up game because that's what you do in improv, right? <laughs> yeah. you, you warm up. We never, ever 
have warmed up for this podcast, so this will be a first. But if you want to lead us through a warm up right away, and and then we'll get to know you. Sure. Yeah. No Might stranger well danger warm here. Up, yeah. yeah, and then we'll get to know each other deeply. Okay, great. So, um, a game we can play is like a monologue, and we'll just go around the circle. <laughs> the figurative circle that we're in uh and we'll each just say one line of dialogue and we'll tell a story yeah Mm -hmm. all right makes sense we'll just try it you Mm -hmm. guys are in so um uh, one day i was walking down the street and i saw this huge sign on this sign was the words open for business (laughs) finally and then i thought to myself it's covid how could they be open for business and then i remembered i was drunk Oh, is that it? <laughs> and end of story. No, I'm just kidding. No, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And even though it was 1030 on a Tuesday morning. I had told myself, you know what? Today's the day. Even though I'm batshit drunk, I'm going to get sober and also support small businesses. So I went into this business, which was a nail salon, and uh, asked for their finest pedicure. And they said, pedicure? We only do manicures here, sir. (laughs) So I sat down for a manicure and they gave me a glass of champagne. And I was ecstatic. I was so ecstatic because I said, fuck it. I'm not getting, I'm having another drink. I'm not getting sober. I'm getting more drunk. I just asked for the champagne to keep on flowing and flowing and flowing. And then it kept flowing and flowing until I was watching Flo Rida on MTV. (laughs) And then my mom showed up and she said, Ted, not again. You do this every Tuesday. So I said, don't worry, mom. It's a manicure this time, not a pedicure. And they said they were open for business. So here I am. (laughs) Also open for business. (laughs) The end. Yay. Mom. (laughs) I totally swear. I don't think I'm allowed to swear. Am I? Oh, yeah. We, okay. Oh, yeah. Oof. We're rated R. Oof. Yeah. Cock. Balls. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Really, you know, right away that show is just <laughs> the talent that improv takes. Because I'm someone, I grew up doing drama, improv. It's like my favorite thing. And I froze because I expected Lund to say something like, I don't know. He said something normal and it threw me off. So that's Something a, normal? Yeah. You don't normally do that. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's good support. I think like in improv, it is all about like, you don't have to be super funny and you don't have to be like super ingenious. You you should be saying the next thing, mm-hmm. whatever that next thing is. It shouldn't be like, and then aliens came down and burned my toes off and I got, my brain got plummeted into the sky because then it's like, what the hell I do that. I do? Yeah. <laughs> isn't, isn't like the number one rule of improv is don't say no. Say just yes. Say yes. Mm-hmm. I think you guys taught me that a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard it I'm somewhere. I'm glad you so. retained that. Well, I've yeah. been telling you that since this podcast started. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Like, no blocking. <laughs> just takes other people to yeah. also state it for it to be true yeah it is one thing we teach which is like say yes and support but i think like improv's like evolved and there's like this new i guess sometimes a new approach which is like be curious about your partner and what they're gonna say and what they're gonna do because if we're curious we always come at it from a place of positivity and not negativity that's deep that's yeah. really yeah, deep yeah. <laughs> i didn't realize this is gonna be so introspective but, abcs wow. of improv always be curious oh Oh, you can use you. that. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Tomorrow on our social media, ABC. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to the beginning now. Just talk a bit about Bullskit, you know, the, the history of it. It's been around in Red Deer a long time, obviously, yeah. because mm-hmm. of COVID, it's taken a big hit. Like, <laughs> yeah. really, pretty much the whole performing arts community has. Yeah. But yeah, talk mm-hmm. about the beginning. You know, we, both of you have been a part of it for a long time and are really the two, like, pillars of it and why it's still standing today. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I guess, I guess very yeah. shakily standing. <laughs> yeah, very shakily. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of people that's like attributed to its success for sure. But we mm-hmm. started, Amy and I started it back in 2008. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Whoa. No, that's a yeah. lie. No, that's right. Is that a right? Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So 2008 and it was kind of just like, I came to her after she got back from Italy and I was like, we should start a company. And then a month later, we're doing our first show, which was wow three hours long and like the worst thing ever. It had some 
gold in there, it, but yeah. it was. <laughs> Sounds familiar, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. your first show is always super shaky, and then it was up from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we started off as a variety show, so we had a bunch of different people from the community. We had a dance troupe, we had comedians, we had films. Yeah, yeah, it was there was a lot jam packed into one night, yeah, and then our improv and, and sketch, which we carried through throughout most of Bullskit's life too. So yeah, so in our second year, we really figured out. Oh, the niche is people like comedy and people really want comedy and we like doing it. So we shifted to just doing improv and sketch and then it kind of evolved from there. Yeah. And those two things were more familiar to us as artists and performers mm -hmm. as well with theater background and some improv training to start us off versus stand-up is an entirely different beast. Do you guys find your, your theater background really helps out or do you have a lot of people yeah. coming to you with no drama background, no acting background whatsoever that just are intrigued and want to get involved in it? I mean, that's definitely possible. I, For myself personally, I probably wouldn't have done it or been as successful if it wasn't for my theater background. I found that it's really helpful just in terms of acting and we find with our performers, if they come to us as an actor, then we don't have to teach them the the basics of acting. stage etiquette, acting, uh, mm -hmm. direction, um, things like that. But I mean, all of that can be taught through improv. And there are certain things that need to be kind of undone when you're learning improv versus being an actor. So there are differences there. But for myself personally, I found it really valuable to be a performer first and then an improviser. Yeah. And I was a really terrible performer. <laughs> 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 no, like I was, I was always like a good writer and a good director. <laughs> so that helped me like within the company. And I I became a good actor because of improv and because of sketch, like because I was exercising that muscle every single month, which mm -hmm. is nuts because we did a brand new show every single month for 12 years, 12 wow. years wow. Yeah. constantly. So... I mean, like, that's a feat in itself. And I think once we hit year five, we started to get anyone and everyone just interested in improvising because it's this art form that I think can help you both, like, personally and professionally, but then also as a performer. So it just kind of depends on how you want to take it. And you can utilize it like across the board, which is really cool. And that has only come up because of like all the training we've done. Like I've been to Chicago and Seattle and I've done stuff in Europe and a lot of our performers have been to Chicago. And so all that training is like here and located <laughs> here now. And we like to share that. And yeah, if you're into it and just want to have a good time, that's what we do on stage. We get to play pretend as yeah. adults. How sweet. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So I, I got a two-part question for the people who maybe haven't heard of Bullskit Comedy before. So or rewind, I guess, a year and a half or two years. <laughs> you know, where are you guys performing? And if somebody is wanting to get involved, how and is there a fee? Can you, I know Ted called them players or performers. Yeah, they learned something today. Um, oh. Yeah. Like a yeah. little more information on maybe how, how to get involved and where. Yeah. So our home is at the Scott Block Theater, which is like downtown Red Deer. We've been there since the beginning. We used to play at the Matchbox for one whole year. It was so <laughs> exciting. And then we moved quickly to the Scott Block and it's been our home ever since. And so we're always there. We have we operate out of two spaces, our main theater, which is our like our big shows, and then our centennial, which is like our smaller improv shows. Um, and then if you're wanting to get involved, we have workshops actually trying to run right now. <laughs> so please um, come take a workshop. We offer both sketch writing and improv. Uh, and then we're also looking at improv for professionals. So how you can take improv into your day-to-day -day life or in your podcast or wherever, <laughs> right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, anyone can come take a workshop. You don't have to to have previous experience and then Not we also have auditions for our conservatory the conservatory is like a way more intensive training than you would get in our workshops and we you would do four shows over the span of i think it's five months and then also like weekly training so if you want to like go like a die hard you come do the conservatory with me and I train. I yeah. do that program. And you can find all that information online. Our website, which yeah. is bullsketcomedy.com. You bet. Oh, that's that's a smart thing to call your website. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought, I was Makes like, sense. you know, <laughs> maybe we should call it .org and just make it really confusing. <laughs> One thing I get out of that actually is, w would be pretty cool for business and, and people who are involved with public speaking, is you mentioned professional development. Like one area that people maybe don't think of 
being able to pr improve themselves through improv. I think that's a fantastic idea. And for people who haven't thought of that before and are looking for ideas as we come, hopefully come out of this pandemic sooner than later, I think that's great, PD. I know this podcast has helped me immensely with, you know, not so much my grammar, but being able to speak in, <laughs> in front of a microphone. So immensely though, that's yeah, pretty that's, good. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a big word actually. I'm yeah, pretty proud. Probably from his word a day calendar yeah. that he got for Christmas. <laughs> We're immensely proud of you. Uh, <laughs> and I immensely want you to join a class. <laughs> well, and see, I think as a group, we should because you might think you're only going to take an improv class or sketch or any workshop if you're going to actually do those things. But I think, A, it's just fun to do. Like, who doesn't mm -hmm. watch Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mm -hmm. Or go to Bull Skit or go to a local improv troupe and watch that and be like, man, I wish I could do that because it does translate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Into and you never know. Like I said, I went to radio school, did all that stuff, kind of got away from it. But mm -hmm. I've used those skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in not just with this podcast, but everyday life. So and it just might be something to do a Friday night or I don't know when you hold them, right? But yeah, go, for go you with guys, a Friday night. Let's right? Like, like go, and, go and do it just for fun. And mm -hmm. really, if you don't get anything out of it other than that, you're going to go and have fun. Like, why yeah. not? Yeah. One of the things I always say in like my first like our intro class is like you improvise constantly all day. Like the, like the cliche one is like, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? It's like a great first <laughs> improv scene that we all do. But if you can take that one step further and actually actually connect with another human being. I teach eye contact. We don't make eye contact in life. Now you're all getting self-conscious about it, but we just don't. And especially now during the pandemic, we really don't make eye contact because we have a barrier and we can hide behind the barrier, which oh, is yeah. a mask. And so like, <laughs> I was just at a gig and I was like, take time to actually like look at the person you're with or look at the people you're with because we don't. And like mm -hmm. improv in its like core is about connecting and about telling stories and about being relatable to people and like sharing something. Um, and so for me, it's like, that's what I deeply love about improv is it just allows me to connect with someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, we all know those, that person that's just full of shit. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. what better way to, to take a class and become a professional bullshitter? I mean, that's, I don't know if that's what you call your workshop, but you can, you can use, you can use I mean, that idea we'll, if you we'll, want. We'll just do workshops for the professional yeah. bullshitters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is a whole different demographic right there that you can hit. There yeah. And go. I think that's what Amy was talking about is like kind of breaking down those crux because we're all really good at putting up that bullshitter wall mm -hmm. um, to not really be real people. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can be this person because this is what I want to be. I mean, that's what life is now with everyone living <laughs> online. Yeah, with their, yeah. With their fake Instagram and but TikTok and Facebook profiles. So Yeah. In a real life situation, it forces you to actually see another human. So if I'm going to insult you, whether like you're going to have some sort of a reaction and I'm going to see that on your face and that's going to hit me differently because we're real people in the room together so mm -hmm. I can actually see your facial expression and see you be hurt or overjoyed or whatever it is and then that's going <laughs> to I mean if you insult me I'm not going to be overjoyed I <laughs> hope you would be <laughs> we but go that. ahead go ahead Let's, <laughs> give me the insult I'll see <laughs> We do teach that, that to lose the fight right away. So if Amy did insult you and you're like, oh my God, thank you so much. I am such a dickhead. <laughs> oh. Like it, then she's like, oh God, what do I do with that? Like, so, so you lose the battle right away mm -hmm. rather than yeah, they throw them conflict, off. right? Yeah, they throw them off their game. That you is just accepting change this the whole yes. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a Ted and London Dustin workshop. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. We so anytime that. they like chirp, you just accept it all. Yeah. I mean, I accept it anyways, <laughs> like, because it's usually correct, but, but one, well, one. accept it with joy <laughs> yeah, and yeah. positivity. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that like, hey, I want a divorce. Great. Oh, actually, I did say that. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 told you no. I'd get one in there, Lundy. <laughs> That's it for today. So I, <laughs> that's, that's not, that won't be it for today at all. But you know, the one really cool thing about improv too is obviously watching it is a lot of fun, but I'm going to flash back to August when, when the two of you and one more Aaron yep. came out and, and opened up for okay. us and warmed up the crowd and, and did some improv with us. And 
these yeah. three guys, well, these two guys in Walsh were really nervous to do it. And they thought, oh, it's it's going to be bad. We're not going to be good. But really, and you guys could talk about it. Like, how cool was that, that experience going up there, doing it, improvising, just really thinking on your feet? And it, it went great. And it, it did, I think, warm us up for the rest of the night. Uh, yeah, no, I, I had a blast doing it. Um, I, w- I wasn't too nervous going on stage to do that. I mean, make an <laughs> idiot of myself quite a bit anyway. So. Yeah, maybe you maybe you're not included <laughs> but, in that. But, yeah. but there, I mean, still, you're still playing to a, a couple hundred people that you don't know most of them. So, but after after we started, it was just like talking to anybody else. So, uh, I, le- I learned a few things that night, and <laughs> I think I think I could benefit from one of your workshops. I was pretty nervous. I had to have a couple uh, a cocktails before I got up <laughs> on stage, and. I think I was a little more comfortable when Kevin was able to come up with me in the game that you guys have provided. There was two of us and and two of you guys. And Kevin was moving a bunch of my arms. And like Lundy said, as soon as you got up there, you kind of got lost in the moment and and just had a little bit of fun with it, not realizing how many people were actually watching. And there was lots of laughs for Ryan and and Ted's and, and the skits that happened before. So... A little bit of pressure, but at the same time, I was like, you know, the crowd's into this and, and they're liking this. So uh, a little bit of pressure off and ended up being awesome. Like Ted said, yeah, it warmed up the night and I know it warmed it up for Lundy because I think you threw a shirt in the crowd later. That <laughs> night. You, you couldn't remember throwing your you shirt in the crowd. other half. It was yeah. like another guy who's dressed, dressed just like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's a real yeah, fan. He's a real fan. I wouldn't call him either half, but yeah, he's a, he's a nice, he's a nice gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Who's got good taste in shirts. See, for us, like, I was nervous coming into that event because I knew that everyone in that room is there for you guys. They weren't there to see us. And so, for us, it's like, oh, God, we're going to open. And so, that's where I was like, we need to have them with us on stage because... Mm -hmm. Those people love you guys. So anything you yeah, they do, were they're going to... You can say it. They were No, there, yeah. no. <laughs> I don't think at that point, but they But just... they came there initially for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Hammered because they knew, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they just love you guys. And so anything we got you to do, even if it was out of your comfort zone, we were there to support you, right? Mm-hmm. Like we weren't yeah. going to like deliberately make... Well, I mean, <laughs> we were also going to look like fun. idiots with you. So yeah. it wasn't like you were just like, we're standing there watching you guys improvise. <laughs> No, no, we were in it with you. And I think that's what improv is. It's like, we're doing this together. We're all going to look like idiots. And we all are going to commit hard to looking like that. And that's the fun of it. Yeah. But you guys had won them over. Like, whatever we did, who cared? Like, our one scene we did by ourselves, I was like, we should never have done that. (laughs) (laughs) No one cared. Never follow Ryan Lund. I think that's the <laughs> that's the one thing we've learned. But now to, to add on to that, because I know the last two years have been, well, I mean, I'll let you talk about that yeah. too, have been tough. But are you looking for more for more players? And not only that, but going back, you don't necessarily need that theater background, right? If it's just no. something you want to dip your toe in, mm-hmm. obviously you can train them and then see how it goes from there, right? But you don't have to have that experience. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a definitely a loaded question right now. Um, because I think both get like we've stopped like we aren't like we're doing gigs and we're doing like some training but it's kind of like an ass by ass basis and like we have some players that are willing to play but a lot of people are still pretty nervous to kind of get back out and do it plus they haven't been doing it so there's this like overarching anxiety of like oh I have to go out and be someone's entertainment where I am not like a whole human being anymore <laughs> not only do I need to leave my house but yeah. I need to do it with confidence and be in front of people yeah. and yeah, perform. Yeah. So I think people are nervous. So we're constantly evolving what Bullskit will become post pandemic, if that's even a possibility. But it just seems really far away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we are trying. And so we are offering workshops in the hopes that people want to get out to connect again. Mm-hmm. And so right now, that's kind of like the first step for people if they feel confident in wanting to get out. Cause I know that I feel like there's like, groups of people that do and then there's groups of people who are like I'm really good at watching Netflix now (laughs) so I'll just do that all day maybe expand on like the workshop side of things because that seems to be our near future uh, Mm -hmm. with what you guys have going on is it uh, you could pay by group? Can individuals pay? How does that, how does that whole model work? 
So right now it's an individual basis. So you would register for a class just like if you were going to register for like a fitness class or anything else that you're wanting to sign up for. They're four week sessions. Two hours. Yeah. Two hours long. And yes, yeah, so you commit to that every Tuesday for a couple of hours. Come in, learn some skills, hang out with some cool people. And then you also get the opportunity to to showcase what you've learned where we do student shows. Mm-hmm. And so we have four levels. There's an A, B, and C, and a D. That's four. A, B, C, D. <laughs> um, that you can take right now. And then we're offering our, <laughs> our sketch <laughs> workshop, uh, which there are two levels and then an intensive where we do a show. So we create a show from scratch and show you guys how to do that. Mm-hmm. And all of it is modeled after Bullskit's curriculum. Mm-hmm. So we spent the last two years looking at how we do improv, how we do sketch, and then formulating workshops around the way we do it. Because mm-hmm. stylistically across the country and all over the world, it's very different. Like you go to Europe and it's this like slow, intimate, like sensual improv, I guess. <laughs> and then you oh, go... Can you, can you do like a arena? Can you improv that improv? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Later, just you and me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Always yeah. say yes. <laughs> Good job. Perfect. You're learning. You're learning. Yeah. No, so proud. Yeah. Thank you. But in the, in the States, there's like long form and then super fast pace. You see B style improv. Ted really likes this. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, I'll be okay. It. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so those are our workshops. But then we're also offering a reconnect workshop for businesses because a lot of people have had a lot of people. What's that word called? Working from home? Yeah. Quit. Just quit. <laughs> remote. Oh. Remote. Turn, remote work. Yeah. Remote yeah. working and turnover. Was too, that an improv game? Because it felt like one, like a warm up. Just, just quick me, back Amy and forth. And we yeah. just talk in our brains to each other. Because we always finish each other's. Sounds. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Sandwiches. Yeah. yeah, nice. I You shouldn't finish each other's sandwiches. No, no. We are in a yes. pandemic. You're not yes. allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> you can't eat each other's food. They live together. Yeah. Oh, we make okay. our own sandwiches and eat them. Eat our own sandwiches <laughs> together, enjoying each other's company. <laughs> I'm, you got to say yes to that. <laughs> I just want that to be the podcast. It's you two sitting at home making sandwiches You know together. what? The way the internet is, that would get way more... <laughs> Yeah. Like, and then you have to have the nothing. sounds of yeah. making the sandwich. Mm. And then the sounds of eating the sandwich. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I would hate that part. Oh. Mouth noises. Oh. 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 ASMR. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but yeah so, what if we turned your podcast yeah. into? <laughs> hey, Riley, do you need some B-roll, buddy? Mm. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, she loves mm. it. B-roll for what? I hope he's what? listening to <laughs> yeah. everything. Like sandwiches. sandwiches. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's a reconnect workshop. And it just mm. allows like uh, people within your business to come together, reconnect, as well as like reinvigorate creativity um, because I think the pandemic has really like forced people's creativity to be pretty low and I think improv is a great way to kind of reinvigorate that and just like get opens it people up and that, that reconnection piece is huge too yeah. and even not only just we talked about the humanity of that but also just that creativity piece too mm-hmm. once you connect with another human then you can kind of get into a flow with them yeah yeah we yeah. have that yeah Get, yeah. get in sync yeah, <laughs> get with in one sync. another. Yes. Yeah. So there's lots of options. If people just reach out to us, like we're open to kind of working with any kind of business or to kind of do anything right now. Like we just did the lip sync battle and that was like a an ask. Like yeah. Bonnie was like, you guys should do this. And then Brandon was like, I've signed you up. And I was like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> we We totally have people. We yeah. didn't really. Yeah. So it's, we're just kind of open right now to just like engaging in the community as best we can and supporting other people through improv and through sketch. Like we can make killer TikToks. I mean, don't look at our TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing, though, is like TikTok is where people are going to be creative. Like I go to get like ideas from TikTok, which is like crazy to me. But I'm just like, like I'm strapped for ideas. Everything's about children and no one wants to see that. <laughs> Sorry, I have two kids. Yeah. So that's why I say everything's about kids. No, just we have to sit here at the beginning of every episode and hear about certain people's kids that we don't care about. Who has kids? That's Jealous. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Walsh is here, by the way. He he found his way in. <laughs> I want to learn a little bit more about how many hours you guys put in a lip sync battle because you guys were the winners. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those who weren't at Bose that night, 
they raised helped raise a ton of money for yeah i was for like i think fifty thousand. Oh, we wow. helped them raise fit no i'm just kidding we really <laughs> did not help that but how well, much time do you guys put into choreographing and, and we probably spent more time deciding what songs we wanted to do and <laughs> changing actually, our choices yeah. than actually putting it together but when we do a sketch show we usually say 16 hours for so a show. for a two, yeah, less than a two, it was like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. So because we're at a practice, <laughs> uh, we spent quite a bit of time dancing and just convincing Scott to wear a leotard and dance on stage. <laughs> 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 I say we had like three or four rehearsals, three on their feet rehearsals and a couple brainstorming, figuring out what the heck song we're going to do and voting on songs. Yeah. What song, what song do you guys do? We did Maniac from Flashdance, and yeah, then we also it. did yeah. uh, Timber. Timber. The best song ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you love Timber? My oh, but grand- you did that, oh, sorry, you did yeah. Timber in a different style. Yeah, so my that's like my grandfather's theme song, um, because he was, he's like, he was 80 and he was always falling. <laughs> and so... <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering about that, but I didn't oh want to ask God. about yeah, his wife. No, totally. You can totally ask. Yeah, yeah. it was his theme song. We, ha- his, we have a sweater and it says Timber on it. Like, we all know he falls and so i was like guys this is a great idea and so we did it (laughs) yeah yeah and then maniac scott got to play the role of oh jennifer beals yeah is that her name of course you know it yes yeah no, that's the Jessica Beale oh, yeah, is yeah, Justin yeah, yeah, Timberlake's yeah, okay, wife. Yeah. Ted knows. Yeah. Ted knows. <laughs> and that was days removed from him playing Santa. As oh well, yeah. Because yes, yeah. we do have to thank both Skit because you arranged it and Scott came out and <laughs> that was all improv. If anyone has watched the Santa yeah. interview, he made all that up on the spot. So much yeah. so like he threw me off. <laughs> many times so He's there's just another good. yeah mm-hmm. just goes to show you, you know he put the time in i don't know what his background is if he was someone that kind of started from scratch and, and yeah, got an improv yeah. so yeah very yeah. much so yeah i like, thought you his background of santa <laughs> oh, yeah. what's my motivation yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i worked in the mall for a couple years and then i really have been preparing for this for like eight years <laughs> finally <laughs> someone asked me no yeah scott started off and he did like all of our workshops like i think mm-hmm. he did three years of auditioning for me <laughs> then we let him in finally um and then he was with us for like i think four years before taking a break and then doing some stand-up and then now he's wanting to come back so we've had lots of people like come and go and scott was one of those people and he's mm-hmm. so funny like he's just so he's uh, a great example of someone who doesn't have any sort of theater background and yeah. just stepped into it and yeah. is a rock star yeah he's very good mm-hmm. he's funny I'm yeah. glad that you said it was all improv because I was losing it on the side. Yeah, like it was, it was people, I, and you, you, even if you know Scott, you wouldn't know it was Scott either. No. Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, because you guys, another thing you do, right? You were the roving elves. You kind of did, I think, is it called roving character yeah. play, yeah. whatever it is. Yep. You it's know, our favorite thing to do. At the boast thing. And, and I had no idea we it was Scott. We love doing that. Yeah. Please hire us all the time for that. We love it. Can you hear the sarcasm? (laughs) Hey, I love it. Oh, Amy loves it. No, no, but yeah. And Scott knew all of you. Like, Scott knew so many people and be like, oh, hey, Ted. (laughs) And like, people were so freaked. And then you're like, who are you? He's like, I'm Santa. (laughs) (laughs) Like, your childhood came rushing back to you and you're like, he is real. Yeah, he knew, yeah. That he does exist. <laughs> I I always knew he did, but yeah. so as we wrap up, <laughs> <laughs> I told you what a good way, what a good way to wrap. Yeah, up. so hard. So no, but we we did a warm up game. So now that we're warmed up, you're gonna lead us through another game. That's gonna you know we don't usually make like sexual innuendos really? on this podcast or anything. So it's gonna be tough for us. But we're wow. going to try. So lead us through this this other game. Yeah, this is a game we also never play. I mean, I play. I no, heard I about know. it for the first time. <laughs> What's it called? Tonight. So uh, this game is called Sex With Me. Oh, no one plays that game with me either. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you set me up for that yeah, joke. Yeah, he's yeah like, that was oh, an improv. That's no been in my interrupt. head for like a I half hour. I have to ask yeah. Jenna <laughs> I'm going to have the funniest joke. Just lose the battle. Just accept it <laughs> and then lose yeah. the battle. Yeah. Well, you're I a can't. quick learner. Yeah, yeah. Well done. You're in. Like I said, you're already hired. He's very technical anyways. <laughs> <laughs> very professional. Yeah. So it's called Sex With Me. It's a short form game. Um, and how it works is we pick. 
I'm trying to be. I'm trying no, to, no, you <laughs> can say it. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. No, it's everyone knows what I was going to say. Yeah, it is short with you. Yeah. So um, you pick an object or a, a thing. Maybe Kevin wants to yell things out and, or we can just pick things. Um, but you would say something like sex with me is like a hockey net. You have to pull the goalie to get. A goal. I just stole that from Ted. I don't know. Pull the goalie to score. Pull the goalie to score. (laughs) See, he's way better at it. So I'll just pick a topic and then anyone can chime in with sex with me is like blank because funny line. After I just said, don't be funny. Here's your opportunity. (laughs) So many Kevin pick a random We learn the rules and then we break them. Anything. Couch. Couch. Sex with me is like a couch. Musty, but dependable. (laughs) Sex with me is like a couch. (laughs) I pull out, but my couch doesn't. What? No, I did it oh, wrong. You blew it. My couch pulls out, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, Jokes yeah. are hard. <laughs> Sex with me is like a couch. Once I get on, I get off. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's a sex with me is like a couch. Once I get on, I never get off. But I always get off. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Of yeah. course you do. Sex with me is like a couch. There's room for all my friends. <laughs> hey, nice. No. Okay, let's get okay. a new let's get a new object. Uh shirt. Sex with me is like a shirt. I need an XL. <laughs> <laughs> Sex with me is like a shirt. I only feel comfortable covered up. Oh. <laughs> it's sad. <Yeah>. It's <laughs> Sex with me is like a shirt. It's optional. Hey. <laughs> that's a that's a good that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> Yeah, that was a very, a very clean awesome. joke. Yeah. All right, yeah, pick an, two together. Any, anyone can pick a, an, an item object. Here. Yeah, a uh, musician just for Ryan if he's listening. <laughs> he's tuned out. Yeah. <laughs> Sex with me is like a musician. I always love it when they finger pick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we went there. <laughs> All right, that's where we're going. Yeah. What? Are you, come on, you guys know so many musicians. I'm, I'm, I don't. Sex with me is like a musician. You make more money if you do it on the internet. Hey, oh. nice. Sex with me is like a musician. I'm a one man band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. And Nailed scene. it. <laughs> so good. New thing. New thing. A therapist. Oh God. <laughs> Sex with me is like a therapist. I don't get it nearly as much as I need. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why are mine always so depressing? <laughs> Maybe you should see a therapist. <laughs> Sex with though. me is like a therapist. I always end up laying on a couch. There you go. Sex with me is like a therapist. It always costs way too much. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> Sex with me is like a therapist. The deeper I go, the more they charge. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you guys thought I was bad. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Also, I'm not therapist. Sure that's how that works. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think we have to end there. That was uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> I've never had therapy, so. <laughs> you guys can take yeah. this game like. <laughs> and play it just the four of you if you need a good warm up. It's always a good yeah. warm up. Sex is always a great warm up. I feel like that's <laughs> just a good drinking game, too. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what we do. We just <laughs> warm up and then go home. Yeah, we yeah. warm Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sex, with, sex with me is like a good warm up. <laughs> Yes. And that's all it that's is. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's anyway. <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. Like I said, it keeps going. It, we can keep going yeah. and going. Well, we Sex could. You guys like can. this conversation. It was really short. <laughs> <laughs> that's called a sucker punch, Lund, where you say something different than what they're expecting you to say. Yeah, no, I expected you to say yeah. that. No, yeah, okay. Yeah, everyone yeah. expected yeah, that. So, <laughs> it's so self deprecating. Yeah, I know. I I probably do need that therapy but anyways to wrap up (laughs) thank you Jenna and Amy for coming again we'll let you do um, a bit of a plug for Bullskit because yeah the the shows aren't really happening right now but people can you know especially I think of a lot of corporate gigs that that you can go out and do and and run stuff like this whether it's just for the beginning of a meeting or anything like that so you already Mm -hmm. threw the website in there which got the Lund seal of approval but uh, another way too is just to follow you on social media because it is well it's it's just an extension 
extension of what you do, but it's on yeah. social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you want a good laugh right now, definitely hit up our Twitter feed. The hilarious Dr- Jeremy Robinson is running that, and he mm-hmm. is pretty funny on there. Um, but yeah, so definitely follow us through our social. It's Bullskit Comedy across the board. Definitely Bullskit Comedy, not Bullskit. You'll find some other Bullskit in Iowa who is much different than us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Bullskit Comedy across the board. Please hit us up for anything. Dustin, mm-hmm. Bullskit Comedy across the board is not the name of their Twitter <laughs> handle, so don't search that. Yeah, that's a very, very different Twitter handle. <laughs> but yeah, so we're d- we're on board to do any kind of corporate work. On our website right now, we're offering workshops, and then we're hoping to do a show for International Women's Day. It's with our like core women's group, which mm-hmm. is with Kaylin Mel from The Dirty Show and then Amy, I, and Lisa. So fingers crossed that we're allowed to do that in person. Mm-hmm. Um, and if not, we'll have to hit up Ryan or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, so hopefully we can have an in-person show then. And for Mother's Day, that's mm-hmm. our plan. Yep. Mm-hmm. Come find us on social. We love to connect and it's the best way to do it right now. It's the only way. It's the, it's the only way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I think I think we already we'll, we'll do a workshop for yeah. sure. I think it'd be a lot of fun and kind of show off what's going on there. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, again, Jenna and Amy, thank you so much for. Yes. Uh, usually we don't get this off the rails until like the actual <laughs> episode starts recording, so we're warmed up for that too. So thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be your best episode yet, just because we were here. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah, Ten, even, top, like, like, top twenty-two for top sure. 22. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even if it's not, I mean, at least we had fun, right? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you. Yeah. There yes. you go. Lose the yeah. battle. Lose Thanks. the battle. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I really appreciate having us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and just before I forget, because I'm glad you noticed our firefighter picture here right mm-hmm. away, because for mm-hmm. Bullskit Comedy, How could I not? you get you will walk away with your own copy of this. Your picture? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Not this one. This one's oh. ours. Oh. But we have a will copy you for you. It? Yes. Excellent. Just you though. <laughs> can't say can't yeah. say no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we only get one picture for us to share? No, we got two. Oh, oh yeah. nice! Yes! My husband's going to be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the general reaction. <laughs> Sex with me is like a f- firefighter picture. It's better with real firefighters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you one more time to Jenna and Amy from Bullskit Comedy. Again, a, a really important piece of Red Deer's arts and culture scene. And we learned a ton. Namely, I learned that like based on improv rules, we've done everything in this podcast all wrong. And we're going to still keep doing it yeah, wrong. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no right way or wrong way. But this is an improv. Do, right. This is real life. This is. <laughs> well, it's a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> but in the general rule of performing, like I said, you know, a lot of things they say, all I can think of is, man, we do that a lot. We do that a lot. Blocking was the big one, which we're, I think we're all New Year's resolution. We're all going to try and just go with it more. Right, Lund? We'll see. Hey, uh, we started off good and then you, you kind of tailed off there. But again, that's one, uh, uh, an organization hit really hard by COVID because obviously when your your whole organization thrives on live shows and people coming out, it's pretty tough. So make sure any way you can support Bullskit, even as little as following them on on social media and the things they do there. When they brought up the point of bringing them in for kind of that um, team event or to kind of bring back the culture, uh, not that I work in a large office anymore, but I could definitely, you know, talking to my old colleagues, you know, they're, they're going through some growing pains. And I think every company is, Ryan, I think you can agree with, I thought that was a brilliant idea of just to a good way, a, a good team building activity. So. Well, and like, as we come out of this pandemic, you know, some people that have been working for the last year and a half, two years that have maybe started new jobs have never really had that human interaction with coworkers. Like that's a big part of building culture and and understanding different personalities in offices. And I think the improv piece and really opening up and loosening up uh, within an organization's huge. So I, I never thought of it before tonight, before they brought it up, but I think it's great PD for a company if they, you know, people are always looking for different things to do and, and outside the box thinking. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully having them on the podcast uh, got them front of mind of a few different businesses uh, moving forward. Yeah, I know myself personally, I've been working from home for the last year and a half, year and three quarters. And yeah, you do you do kind of miss out on a lot of the, the day-to-day connections that you have in an office or in a whatever setting you work. I, I agree that you, your creativity does take a hit too, because you're either just staring at a computer at, all day or on the phone all day or on a Zoom call all day or, or, or whatever, but you're still by yourself. 
yourself and you don't have that camaraderie with the person in the office next to you or or the the person up front or or, or wherever you work so just getting out and and having the confidence to, to get out and be social again I think is is huge and I know I know a lot of people are probably lacking that confidence so what a great way to to build that back up and um, yeah it sounds like those workshops are going to be very beneficial and what a great resource I mean you heard her talk about uh, the course she's she's taken in Chicago and Seattle and a few other places Red Deer's Red Deer's a relatively small city and it's it, we're kind of lucky to have some some people with that knowledge uh, for improv because I know there's not a ton of places where you can go learn improv or, or take a course and get that one-on-one or, or close to one-on-one training so yeah hopefully we'll be able to get to do a workshop or two and and uh, improve on our improv skills and and <laughs> uh, and anything else we need to, to get better at yeah I think I think it honestly will will benefit us all in, in different ways with this podcast for me like the writing side of it too and again just how we interact with each other and one thing I want to say that um, you know because I recently joined the the bull skit board Jenna and Amy have I, the biggest reason that bull skit is still afloat despite everything is because of how much they care and the passion they put behind it how much work goes into it like they don't it's not a job for them you know all the all the players involved they don't get paid it, it's a passion thing it's for fun and it's for the community so again any way you can support bull skit at all always keep them in the front of your mind I couldn't decide back of your mind front of your mind keep them in your mind wherever it's up to you where you want to keep it but keep them in there um, because yeah it's you know I grew up going to what was called loose moose in Calgary basically same thing uh, I think that's a, a really important piece of Red Deer's downtown of the arts and culture scene and, and hopefully whenever things pick up from COVID that they can pick up as well yeah I keep them in your heart too I mean they're good people <laughs> And yeah, I think we're going to employ the rest of the episode that within reason, we're, we're going to try to use what we learned and go with it and say yes. So we're going to move into a segment we haven't done in quite a while. So let's go in to Shooting the Breeze. Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by Corey Kloss of RBC Dominion Securities, helping families reach their wealth management goals since 2013 by creating a straightforward, clear path. If you have any questions about your current investments or need a plan to reach or maintain retirement, reach out to Corey and his team at RBC Dominion Securities today. Shooting the breeze. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I like that. You just, you you know. I I thought he was having a seizure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He's like, am I going to have to pull the, his tongue out of the back of his throat? <laughs> Just <again." laughs> I like that. Good work. So I think we should talk about 2021. I, we're not going to pretend that it, it wasn't a steaming hot pile of garbage because it was. It was a shitty year, no matter how you slice it. And we're not going to pretend it, it was good. But like anything, I'm like 74% sure we can pull some positives out of it. So first off, and we're just looking for the Coles notes here, but just how was everyone's 2021 as a whole? Because I can imagine like anyone else, lots of ups and downs, notwithstanding, obviously we had a great time doing this podcast. For me, you know, at first I had a tough time thinking about this answer, but (laughs) when you look at 2021 relative to 2020. I think overall 2021 was probably better. Um, Maybe not, you know, the last couple of weeks here, which, you know, the recency effect, but, you know, honestly, uh, I think my answer comes down to (laughs) the best summer ever. (laughs) It it, it wasn't, but... But when you compare it to the summer before that, it felt the most normal that we had in what felt like 10 years, but it had only been like a year and a half, not even. But honestly, it was just nice to, uh, we had some great weather over the summer and I think everyone, or for the most part, everyone was able to just feel a sense of normalcy. And it did feel a little bit like normal life. Every day that goes by, I'm starting to forget what normal life was, but um, I I really did. I think we all had a pretty good summer and uh, that's what I'm going to remember from 2021. Yeah, I shouldn't have let you go first because you pretty much pulled my exact same answer i okay lund for for (laughs) for six for six months of 2021 from that like april to whatever six months from that is september october October. whatever it felt like it was normal again we we went away from the covid online poker games with our friends on saturdays to actually being able to socialize around campfires or camping And, you know, like you said, the recency effect kind of sucks. But for me, the big thing of 2021 was that we had bet on it in our first episode, actually, 
of, of when we thought we would get our first vaccines. And, and here we are. I know, I, I believe all three, maybe four of us or uh, all five of us have been boosted now with our third dose. Um, so doing the best we can to, to get out of this pandemic. But science uh, rings rings tall for me because my wife is, I don't even know if that's the right word, but sounds right. Looms large. Looms large. Rings true. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. You're rings fine. tall. Rings, you know what? rings tall. You know what? We're going to start using the know what I mean, not what I say. Yeah, Because exactly. we know what you mean. But my wife's a scientist, so this has been a, a large subject subject over the last two years. And and for us to to be able to be vaccinated in 2021 and now a third dose to try and keep everyone healthy and get us out of this shithole pandemic, <laughs> that's that's the, the big thing I'll look back on on 2021 is how fast science was developed. But you also, you ended off the year on a high note and 2022 is going to be real good for you and your family. Yeah, I had sex again in 2021, yeah. so... Uh, <laughs> Baby, baby number two is, is on, on route. Yeah. I mean, baby number one wasn't the easiest. So here we go. Aaron didn't know. I didn't know. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Coworker you had Aaron. sex. I had sex. And you know what? The funniest part of this whole thing is I, I pretty much have sex uh, once a year uh, because. <laughs> uh, is that funny or sad? Well, no. Th- <laughs> I mean, from an outsider's view, it's kind of funny because uh, the due date is, is my daughter's birthday. So yeah. hilarious. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. See, once a year. Yeah. 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 So once yeah, every three years, <laughs> two years. <laughs> but the more gene pool is expanding at like an alarming rate because your daughter just had a new cousin recently and also a, another one on the way. And uh, congratulations to, oh, thanks, to everyone boys. in your family because that is a lot all at once for all you moors. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Congrats on the sex, bro. Thanks. The more, the merrier. <laughs> oh, oh the couch that's joke. his Christmas card. The couch next thing makes more years. sense. Yeah, it's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> the more, the holier. <laughs> Wendy, how was your 2021? He you didn't know, have sex. I didn't have sex, man. Um, no, you know what? 2021 wasn't bad. I, I kind of look at it from the same way Walsh looked at it. It was a lot better than 2020. A lot more optimism um, with the vaccine rolling out and us being able to do a lot more things. And for a while, there were kind of in a sweet spot where you could, if you're vaccinated, you could go out and do a lot of stuff. But you still had that excuse <laughs> if you didn't want to go out yeah. because you were worried or because because certain things were closed down. So it gave you the perfect kind of crutch to lean on if you just wanted to say no and you didn't want to say like, no, I don't want to hang out with you. So it was a nice and it was it was a really good spot to be in for certain activities. Now, if you're planning events, it really sucked because so much uncertainty. And I think 2022, or at least the beginning, is going to be pretty much the same. But hopefully, hopefully we're in the final wave or one of the final waves. And then we're going to have an even better summer than the best summer ever, which I, I know it sounds impossible, but I, I believe. I, I don't look back on 2021 with regret. I mean, it was what it was. And um, I mean, 2020 sucked. 2021 is a bit better. And hopefully 2022 we're going to keep ramping up. So uh, I'm optimistic about the year, year to come and I'm not really looking at 2021 in a sour mood, even though even though I could. So I think Lund, you hit on something really, something I've been thinking a lot about. I've been really fortunate through all of this that um, we haven't really been impacted in a major negative way by COVID, um, more inconvenienced by it. And you haven't had to change a lot in our lives. But I think even though there were some really high points in 2020, 21, what I realized is that I got in my own way a little bit. And it's exactly what you said. There was that crutch of not having to do things. And it was a little bit easier to stay home and not go out, not go hiking, not do the things that were safe. And I I think for me, 2022, I really want to get out of my own way, say yes to the hikes, go on the road trip with my husband, you know, and go down to Drumheller and walk around, whatever it is, just do as much as we can and take advantage. Advantage of of what restrictions allow in a in a responsible way, but to to not use the pandemic as such a crutch to just stay home and stay comfortable. You have to say yes more, like I improvising. Ha- yes. Yeah. Yeah, I will say a low point of my 2021 was when I got up at about got up for my dentist appointment, just was dead tired, didn't feel like going, so I called in and said I had COVID. Oh. And I did not have COVID. <laughs> oh my god. I know I know for a fact you're not the only one that has no, done that. I did it once and then it was, you know, like when you call in sick or whatever too, and then after like, man, I wish I didn't do that. Yeah, why did I use that excuse? Yeah. Like I was like, man, like people What if they said Well, I didn't crying. say I had COVID, I just said I had like a cold I had cold symptoms. 
which I mean nowadays is I think COVID. I think you use the radio rule where at the radio station if you were sick at all you stay home it doesn't matter what it is you keep your germs at home why is that a radio rule and just not a rule well I don't know it's just I can't answer that yeah I agree like it is a general rule in all workplaces but honestly before Everyone COVID, no one sick. followed it because yeah. it, you were seen as weak if you if yeah. you were sick which which is bullshit and that's one of the things i know we're going on a tangent but that's one of we're the shooting things, the breeze that's one of the <laughs> things that i hope changes moving forward is mm -hmm. we need to respect and and you hope that people when they say they're sick they actually are sick ted um <laughs> But, I, but but truthfully, <laughs> you're the problem. Like I am. when I look back a couple of years ago, 2019 and, and before that, I mean, we can all say there's numerous times where I went to work with, with a cough and cold and, and I would meet with clients mm -hmm. when I wasn't sick and they would still come and meet with me and they like wouldn't shake my hand in the lobby when I went to greet them because they'd be like, oh, I have a cold. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's nice of you. But then we'd go sit in my office with the door closed <laughs> and no masks. Yeah, and and now like I'm looking back. Minutes. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, oh, well. This doesn't make sense. So that is one thing where, you know, I hope uh, I hope the world changes where you can take those six day sick days. But we've also learned that for the most part, you can be pretty productive at home. And and we're going to see that hybrid work environment where people can be sick and hey, you're sick, but maybe you still put in five hours today instead of eight. But that's still good. Right. Yeah. So I'm very interested to see over the next five to 10 years, how work life balance and just how, how everything changes that way. Just to add on again, to go back, that was a, a good tangent. That's what shooting the breeze is all about. It, it, you go where the breeze takes you, but uh, write that down. Just That's like a fart. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> just like a fart. Write that down. <laughs> yeah, my, write it all down. Uh, you know, you. I think you all hit on a, a lot of good things about 2021. I think the biggest thing to think of is like, we made it through and no matter how it was for you, like I'll, I won't go too deep into it. I had a lot, I had some lows in 2021. I had some highs. Uh, on a more comical note, I basically, some of us slid into 2022 and I crossed the finish line sliding on my face because right before Christmas, I slipped in a parking lot like somebody's 90 year old grandmother and and broke a rib. So that was nice. Then Betty White dies on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And then you think, okay, maybe 2022 is going to be a great start. 52 minutes into, into 2022, I got a $325 traffic ticket, which is my fault. I went four months without re-registering my vehicle. <laughs> so, I mean, there, there's no excuse there, but it was like 52 minutes in and I got pulled over. I was like, great. I haven't been drinking tonight. Like breathalyze me. We'll get out of here. Nope. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, 2022 really, and that's, I think for everyone, 2021 ended pretty poorly, especially here in Red Deer, Central Alberta. We won't get into all the things that got canceled and stuff, but now I look back, uh, you know, and I had some pretty rough times, but you, you made it through. And I think that's what's important. And we did learn a lot in 2021. So I have a question for you guys. We can be quick about it, but uh, what is your New Year's resolution if you have one? I, we, I wrote it down this year because my girlfriend and my sister, and my mom didn't believe I was going to do anything. So uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm working out. Um, I'm starting slow and wrapping up each month. So it's three times a week, 20 minutes a day for the first month and I had 10 minutes the next month and then so on and so forth. So nice and slow. Uh, that way I don't give up after the first week, like, like most people do or what I've done in the past. So, and then I'm going to, yeah, get, get healthy and, uh, beat my rivals. So <laughs> <laughs> very descriptive. Yeah. Apparently he called his penis rivals. <laughs> 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 new year new nickname <laughs> oh hey if you do that three times a week for 20 minutes <laughs> yeah, good luck oh. you know what i am my my resolution i don't usually make them but it's like i just need to go back i went into 2021 like the lightest i'd, I'd ever been i was super healthy you know aaron the athlete and i we had our little running group we've got the runs i was working out a ton getting healthy and i just let excuses obviously like the podcast was a lot and it was an adjustment but i never got back you know i just got back into an unhealthy relationship with food so i just want to be better exercise more drop the weight eat better just make better choices and and like lun said you can't can't do it all at once either but the biggest thing for me is just honestly you're, we're going to turn in a little therapy session here but it is okay that i put the weight back on because it happens i bet you it ha well it happened to a lot of people because a covid's a real excuse mm -hmm. but it like even a good excuse is still an excuse so lund we're, i'm glad to take this journey with you separately 
but simultaneously. You guys could really like maximize the efficiency in your life and your goals by like meal planning together. Like on Sundays, you could, guys could have little cooking sessions with each other and make all your food for the week. Renew your registration together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, isn't it fucked up though that speeding and risking other people's lives is a $150 ticket, but not giving the government $70 once a year is a $325 ticket? I don't know, man. I've never, never been busted for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and you know you joke, but Lund made me dinner tonight so there's hmm? step one yeah i got it i got an air fryer for christmas oh, i have been there you go air frying some stuff yeah. up so less oil healthier i mean plug and eat more but whatever <laughs> <laughs> oh we all have to have a new year's well, resolution. Don't have, don't have yeah I, I didn't make one this year because i always fail yeah so Just, I, I feel like if i if i don't set a goal it, it's it doesn't not get achieved yeah, I, mean, I mean that's a healthy and unhealthy way of looking mm -hmm. you just want to be a little better every day I just want to hang out with my friends. All right. I have a feeling you're You've going to achieve achieved that. your resolution. All right. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, mine was to read more. So I, I grew up a big reader, kind of read into my 20s and kind of have gotten away from it. So I'm happy to say that uh, mid-January, I've already bought a book on my Kindle that is about 10 years old. So that was an adventure. And uh, The book or the Kindle? The, the Kindle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like oh, operating yes. a Kindle yeah. that's 10 years yeah. old is very archaic. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so that's that's my goal, trying to read more. And so far, I've started out well. If you, yeah. if you want to find a book, you can find a book yeah. online. There's got to be a place, like the dark web, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. LimeWire. Yeah, just give yeah, your computer absolutely. herpes to download a book. <laughs> no, I think it, my 2022 resolution is to get out of my own way, do more, say yes, don't get so comfortable being at home, and also to get the runs with Ted and Kevin again. I made, I just made a big batch of chili. <laughs> <laughs> Not, oh. sorry, the, the running group that we have where we go yes. out for <laughs> jogs. The runs. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's a bit of a wrap on our 2021 and our thoughts. Obviously, I think we can, can talk a lot about it. But before we take our usual break here, as always, a quick shout out to the OG, oh dear partner, very first partner we ever had, Door Tender, uh, as they've agreed to stay on with us for all of 2022, which means every time we record, we're going to have some beverages to enjoy again, thanks to them. So thank you, Door Tender. Looking forward to working with, with all of you for another year. And something we didn't talk about in our last segment, that which I think was a, a huge thing to happen in 2021 is they actually announced the inaugural 2021 Tendi Awards. What are those, Ted? Those are door tenders, the most prestigious award you can get from a Red Deer liquor delivery service. A huge congratulations to Troubled Tea, mm -hmm. the top cooler of 2021, and Troubled Monk Daycation Lager, which I think a couple we had a couple of those tonight as well. The top craft beer of 2021. But guys, everyone loves a good underdog story. And let's talk about an all-time underdog story here because the top extras award for 2021 arctic glacier ice just edged out coca-cola as the top add-on order no way that's the some right lund you didn't think it was gonna happen I, and it did i voted for coca-cola i'm gonna be honest <laughs> you didn't vote for shit it was all by purchase <laughs> oh. Oh. i don't know you what. purchased too much ice <laughs> that's voter fraud <laughs> i don't know what i voted for then <laughs> you sound like like half of the americans after every election <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, Zing. but again, you can go to Door Tender's social media, check out those awards. I thought that was a, a pretty fun thing for them to do to end off the year. And as always, if you haven't used them before, even if you have, you download the Door Tender app or go to doortender.ca. Start earning those Door Tender rewards with every purchase as well. And as always, delivery is absolutely free. All right, so my least favorite person in the world is is here with us. Spin Diesel is out again because, uh, you know, Walsh finally had to do something. And I mean, long story short, Handstand remains undefeated. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to make excuses, but I, I got sick uh, actually on Christmas Day and I, I had big plans over Christmas to get it done. And then I, I finally started getting better in this last week. I was really going to hammer it down and new New Year's resolution. <laughs> I am still going to do the eight second handstand sometime in 2022. I'm not going to let it die. I owe you guys a lunch because I didn't do it on time, uh, but I am going to do it this year. Sounds like a Lun TikTok of 2021. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I'll do my TikTok when he does his handstand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that means all four of us are eligible this time though. So as always, again, Kevin, you can pick red. I would like blue. I'll go yellow. 
You know what, boys? I'll take all the purples. Light and dark. Atta boy, Dustin. Atta boy. He's trying to get some good karma. Oh! <laughs> it is purple. It is purple. Would you have taken dark purple first? No, I was going know? green. Were you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? <laughs> I, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to get some good karma there, but you know what? It is about effing time. That's all right. So, Here Dustin, we go. before you spin it, is there uh, something you want or don't want on this wheel? Yeah, I, I think it would be cool to do the cup song. I don't think I want the comedy routine. I think that one would be pretty tough. So here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Song in Spanish. <laughs> so you have I to can't learn. you can't even speak English good. <laughs> I cannot wait for this. Oh, so here's whoa. the rules in this one because we've discussed before. You, it's not a song that is written and sung in Spanish. Like you can't just do Feliz Navidad. You have to pick a song in English. And what do we say? Same rule as the recorder, like the first half of the song. Yeah, like a minute and a half, I think yeah. is fair. Oh, the good news about God. this one is really all it takes is time. If you do a good job, maybe that'll be the, the song I do my TikTok to. Actually, just do a uh, WAP in Spanish and then I can do the TikTok to it. <laughs> you can sing in Spanish and he'll dance. I'll dance yeah. to it. <laughs> All right. So good luck with that. It's set. What are we like February? Let's give him like the weekend. So like February 19th, I think is a, is a Saturday. I'll have it done for Valentine's Day. Okay. Oh, nice day. Okay. Oh, now okay. he's got a Valentine's gift. Okay. So it is set by February 19th. Dustin has to learn and sing a song, an English song in Spanish. But finally, everybody's had to do one. Yeah, it, it was, he was due. Yeah. It was due. All right, so let's put spin away. Now, one of this podcast New Year's resolution, we decided with our, our nice little team meeting we had last weekend was not to make Lund do a deer call anymore. I think we squeezed that lemon dry. But honestly, let's have a look. Like, Lund, you deserve this retirement party Thank for you. doing a deer call. You know, we talk about not blocking and that in uh, the bullskin interview. You never once hesitated to do a deer call when we asked you to and you you did it. It was different different almost every time and I'm sure you hit it once or twice. So yeah. Well, depending on what part of the country the deer is that you're hunting, they respond to different calls. So that's why it's so many, so many different uh sounds. You were doing deer regional dialects? I was, yes. <laughs> that's really impressive, yeah. Lund. I, I did a lot of homework for that role. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. I, I'm just glad you kept us safe that we didn't have a deer storming into the studio every night. We're lucky we're on the second floor because <laughs> if we were on the ground floor. Especially in the summertime. <laughs> Watch out. Lund, you enjoy your retirement, but it is, as you guessed it, time for Deer Call. Deer Call is brought to you by Andrew Russell and Associates with Remax Real Estate Central Alberta, the official realtor of the Oh Deer podcast. Selling or buying a home can seem like a daunting task, so trust the experts with more than 65 years of combined experience and over 40 five star Google reviews to guide you through a smooth and trouble free experience. For more information on the team and the services they provide, visit andrewrussell.ca. And tell them Lundy sent you. Yeah, you're not, not retired from that one, but one, one quick thing on Andrew before we move on, because just a reminder, if you are looking to buy a home, you can still tell Andrew, if you haven't bought with Andrew before, tell him Lundy sent you and we will show up if you want on moving move in day. We're going to bring some pizza and beer for a couple hours. We're going to help you move in. So I can't believe nobody's taken advantage of that yet. I know Dustin really, really wants to do it. So just keep in mind that that offer is still out there on the table. So anyways, one thing that we found with Deer Call is that people really like just talking about pop culture, easy things. Sometimes I think we, and by we, I mean I asked a little too complicated questions. So we're, we're sticking with some easier ones. And with the extended break, we all took from this podcast, uh, you know, and if you're me, the break we took from just being an adult and a productive member of society altogether. But over the, the holidays there, I crushed a lot of TV, uh, binged more than one series all the way through, which uh, is an accomplishment and pretty sad all at the same time. But so we asked people, what TV show should we binge watch next? So you can imagine quite a few here. Brianne and Ashley both said, uh, this is a newer one, True Story on Netflix. I haven't seen it yet. It's just a, a mini series with Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes. Actually, sounds pretty good. So it's only like eight episodes too. So it's pretty, I think it's like a comedy drama about a comedian and his dirtbag brother. A dramedy. Oh, yeah. That does <laughs> save time. Yeah. I knew he kept you around for a reason. 
It's not your hair. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't resist. Alberta European Motor Works on Instagram said Vikings, which I feel like that one's been like, that's one of those ones like you could kind of take a lot of time to binge that at this point. It looks, it looks interesting. I, I've not seen a single episode. I'm always, I'm always thinking about it, but like, I think that show's still going on though. I like to, when I binge something, I like to wait till the series is over with. That way you don't have to wait for like the next season to come out. You can just kind of watch all 30 episodes in a short period of time. So um, maybe once that series is over, I'll, I'll get after it you millennial oh, i'm sorry what's your what's oh, your i can't te- watch a show what's your until technique it's there's got to be like 10 plus seasons of that one though yeah at least like that's a no no i get no. what you're saying there's, I think like there's like five six. or six. Oh, it, i feel like i feel like it's, it was like 23 24 i don't even know if they're still making it it's, oh maybe that's why yeah but they might be done oh, maybe so i can watch it then yeah maybe. It, okay. put it on the list uh, he also said one of my favorites that I just discovered last year, Superstore, which which just wrapped up and they did a pretty decent job of working around COVID on that one. But I think just a, a real surprise sleeper hit in that one. Yeah, I would agree. I, my wife and I watched that a couple of months ago and really got into it. And it, it's kind of like a new aged office and they just put the final season on Netflix. So we have that in the queue ready to go. So I'm a uh, great show, Ted. Just relatable. Like yeah. it's just... It just reminds you, and like you said, good comparison with the office. In office settings, you compare so much to what's going on in the actual office show. You can compare a lot of stuff that happens in Superstore to when you're actually at the grocery store. So (laughs) I think there's that piece that kind of draws you in and it's done the same for me. So it was just that like exaggerated relatability too, right? Where, you know, they have the cut scenes. My favorite thing about the show, they do the quick cut scenes with like the elevator music, you know, versions of, of whatever song playing and just really stuff you probably see at a big box store, right? Uh, there of is customers a, yeah. just doing stupid things and you go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen that or yeah, that, yeah. that I could see someone doing that. I think, yeah, it's heartwarming. I just crushed the sixth season once it came on Netflix and one, uh, a rare, like where it's rare for a comedy like that too, especially they had the break, they had to come back the way they wrapped it up. I thought they did a a pretty great job. Uh, this one's a a little tough to talk about, but again, go all the way back to episode one. I I suggested watching this show and now I think people are going to do a lot of this rest in peace. So the legendary Betty White, but Julie said the Golden Girls. I think we crushed that at the same time, Ted. You and I both watched it all the way through, and I don't think it's on Prime anymore, but what a joy. My goodness, there were some plot holes when you watch it back to back, but you know what? It was... It holds up and it was just a really incredible show and um, an incredible cast. The the quick wit on that show actually is still like matched by very few shows that I've ever seen. So I think all of you should at least watch like one or two episodes and it, it honestly, I think you'll get hooked. Mark and Gino both said Full House and I'm going to add to that too because Fuller House that was on is really terrible, but it's also like if you like Full House, it's it's all that great cheesy, you know, family sitcom again. But I think that's another one that's going to get watched a lot because yeah, Bob Saget again, like 65 years old. Full House again, like it's pretty cheesy, you know, and honestly, I've tried to binge it a bit and it's a little bit hard to watch sometimes because it's so overly cheesy, but it's also just like the nostalgia factor. I think all the shows from the 90s are cheesy. Saved by the Bell. Ah, it's a cheesy show. Uh, Amy and Chris both said Dexter, and now that I guess a new season is out, I never watched it, and I, I don't know. I think people really hated the ending, and then they brought it back. I don't know if anyone... It's one of those shows, uh, and I'm willing to be corrected on this because I, I don't have it in front of me, but like for the first four seasons, incredible. And then they just tried to top themselves, do too much, and it got real bad. If, if you've never watched Dexter, um, I, I would recommend it. Like Aaron said, maybe you fall off partway through but uh, the first couple seasons for sure will get you hooked. Yeah, if you're looking for a serial killer to get behind, Dexter. Yeah, but boy. he's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Is, he's good. He's a yeah. good boy. So Chris also said a couple more. One is, Lund, I think you've watched this through. I tried and fell off. I'm going to try again is The Sopranos. Uh, I've watched half of it. I didn't finish it. Uh, I liked it. I just got distracted. So that's something that I'm going to finish. He's a millennial. Yeah. I got moved on to the next Dustin, thing. I assume you've seen like none of these because you're not really a big TV guy. Yeah, I mean, I see one on there that you skipped over from Lindsay, Ted Lasso, and I that is my binge show right now, and it is awesome. I did miss that, so thank you. You're welcome. If that's one I haven't watched yet. I hear. I just, think it's it's on Apple TV. Right? Yeah, I just that's feel the there's so many different feel good, you know, co- comedy. I don't even know what. It, uh, 
a farmery. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think you just coined a new phrase, yeah. a new word. But, but more Z, it's my favorite up, farmery show. <laughs> you do bring up a good point though, because a lot of TV is so dark, serious, or yeah. dark, or dramatic, and and Ted Lasso is definitely just a feel good. You can sit down and you know you're gonna laugh and just generally be happy when you watch it and think that's a good guy. And uh, Ted, you haven't seen it, honestly. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I would highly. If someone wants to give me their Apple TV login, <laughs> I'll I'll give you my Paramount Plus. I could share my download of LimeWire with yeah. you. <laughs> oh yeah, good. My computer doesn't have enough herpes already. Some peer-to-peer sharing. Um, going thank on. you, Dustin, for <laughs> upside down reading that and and catching that because I know that's one is a recommendation that a lot of people are probably going to pick up on. I mean, let's be looking at this list and what's not on here, man. There's so many things, so it's nice to actually have some recommendation stuff in the the back of your mind. And Chris said another one that I've never really like binged, but I watch it off and on. It is it's one of the best is Curb Your Enthusiasm, which, man, how long has that one been going on now? I, think, like, there's, I think there's 11 seasons with yeah. it and it's it's spanned over like a... 20 years? Yeah, like 17, mm-hmm. yeah, close to 20 years because there was a couple, two, two or three year breaks in between. But that's that's another show that uh, the older you get, the more you appreciate it. Every year I get older, I turn into Larry David just a yeah, little just bit a more. Cranky old yeah. guy just yeah. calling it like it is. and Yeah, he, like he just doesn't give two shits about what anyone thinks. And he calls everyone out for situations that you see in your everyday life. You're like, oh God, that is frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, it's very relatable and he's just, he's the most annoying human being, but in a funny way. So that's a show I really, I really enjoy. It's uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm was also responsible for acquitting a man for murder. So they've that's got right. that. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a documentary on Netflix. I what? Ha- we'll have to look up the name. But this guy was accused of a murder. They had him, the police, whatever, dead to rights, they thought. And he had been at a baseball game where they were taping an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh. <laughs> and they were able to yeah. timestamp so that it would have been impossible for him to have committed the murder. So there you go. Larry Unless David has an identical twin. Yeah. Well, we well, have fine. to watch yeah. the watch the documentary. Yeah, it is, and it's short too. It's only like forty five minute documentary. No. So that is that is I forgot about that, but that's uh, I think I watched that like a year ago. So Kathy said I've never heard of this one. Yellow jackets. Maybe she has spelt Yellowstone wrong. <laughs> no, no, well maybe, but we're not going to talk about that show because it fucking sucks. But you have to watch it. Dude, yeah. Anyways, Yellow Jackets. Here I've got tells the narrative of a team of wild. Wildly talented high school girls soccer players who survive a plane crash deep in the Ontario wilderness in 1996. So, so it sounds like it could be interesting. Is it based on a true story? Then, I doubt. That... I don't think so. I think I. I think I just saw a, that flash across whatever yeah. streaming. Yeah. St- and, and it was actually intriguing from from yeah. just like the pictures and even from this. The, yeah, 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 it does. From the pictures and the words, it was. To uh, be honest, I mean, they hooked me when it said 1996. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, like, a good, what a good oh, year. Oh, man, you know <laughs> that at least one of those. girls soccer team. <laughs> you know at least one of those girls has a Tamagotchi for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's oh. got Juliette Lewis, Christina Ricci, and like a pretty all-star cast. So. Oh, so people who like were famous in 1996. Uh, they're probably like the like they, they were, soccer yeah. moms. Well, yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. okay, that's I will put that one on the list. Uh, this is I actually haven't seen this show. Dustin's finally going to get to chime in on one. John, Jeremy, and Darren, which I think is universally just like critics name this one as one of the best shows ever. The Wire. Yeah, and I got to give credit to Kev for this one because he was the one who put it in my mind. However many years back, I think it's four seasons, and they all kind of have a different plot. If I can remember right, it's been a while since I watched. It. I tried to get my wife into it, and she wasn't qu- like too into it. But just you know, the ball. Baltimore police scene and the Baltimore crime and drug scene is is insane in this show and they they do a, a, such a good job writing and and acting in it. Yeah, not one yeah. you're going to want to watch with the kids and and to be honest some people um, might need subtitles on just to make sure they they kind of catch everything. But uh, great show. It's hailed as one of the best shows ever, I think, on a lot of yeah. big big time lists. So, uh, if you've been putting it off, uh it's it's worth the investment. 
Fuck, and Omar just died this year. Or yeah, twenty twenty one too. So really, yeah. 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 Isn't isn't Idris Elba in that show? Yeah, like, Idris not, Elba is. Not a yeah. lot. But no, but he is. He's he's a pretty in main one, character. In one of the seasons. Well, yeah, for already. a couple. Yeah. 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 Uh, Casey, this is another one that would take a long time to binge. Is it's always sunny in Philadelphia. To me, that's the one that's like if it's on TV, you'll watch. Like I'll never sit down and just watch oh. it back to back to back. But it's just no matter what episode, what season, you know you're going to sit down and enjoy the episode. It is very binge and an incredibly clever show big fan yeah me too I mean it's one of my favorite shows I'm always I'm always watching that on TV and it's it's really really easy watch just because it's basically them banter bickering and bantering for 90 percent of the show when they're trying to hatch some plan so it's right up our alley guys it is but it's well acted too like it's it's brilliant in just how like stupid in its own stupidity right is why I think I like it so much. Yeah, and there's no, like not a lot of special. There's probably no special effects. It's probably a really cheap show to 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 film. It's just it's just basically just the actors who own a bar in Philadelphia and they they have their different shenanigans. And then you know what? It's because you watch it a lot. That's usually when I see it. Is you just have it on upstairs, sit down and watch. And it's yeah, I should binge it. But it's also nice when there's those shows that you just sit down and watch an episode in any order, and it's great. A uh, classic one, which. Top of mind now, if you have never watched Breaking Bad, which is what Tammy said, like I think I've it's one I've watched three or four times, but that is one of the most bingeable shows ever because it's 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 good right from the start and they ended it right at the right time. Yeah, and I would say just get through season one because it is a, like it's great, uh, but it is a little slower and really building that uh, plot and the characters in that show. So if you get a little slower, if it's a little slow season one, just get through that. Yeah, stick with it. Yeah, it's worth it. Or the one I see all the time on Netflix and haven't watched is Money Heist. It's another one he suggested. So Money Heist, I watched the first like three episodes and then I finally realized it's one of those shows that it's dubbed over. Yeah. So it's, I think it's like a Spanish or a... I think it's French maybe. Oh. I don't know what language it is, but the dubbing was pretty, pretty good or at least I wasn't paying enough attention. But then once I saw that it was dubbed over I couldn't get away from that and it just kind of ruined it for me I, I was the same way I, I heard great things like months ago about this money heist and I started watching the first episode I made it like 10 or 15 and all I could see was the bad dubbing mm. and, and I just couldn't watch it see I thought the dubbing was good for the first few episodes <laughs> and then like, Clearly, I, yeah. I think I was just not paying attention because as soon as I noticed it that's all I could see and then you and then I couldn't watch it yeah, yeah. so but if I, you're okay with dubbing then that's that's a really good Promise. I think it's like Squid Games. You have to go in, make sure you choose the original language, and then do subtitles. Yes. I think dubbing. I was I was going to ask that question, like dubbing versus subtitles, because yeah. I think with the subtitles, yeah, you have to read, and it's not like a show you watch when you're trying to fall asleep. Right. No one actually said Squid Game, but which I think just because everybody has either watched it or moved on from it. But I think you have to like on a foreign language film. For me, it has to be subtitles, mm -hmm. or else you just lose the context. And the emotion, because I haven't seen Money Heist, but like Squid Game is so well acted. And I watched an episode with the uh, dubbing and you lose you lose all the emotion out of it. Right. So would you guys prefer subtitles in my Spanish music video? Nope. <laughs> No, we don't want dubbing either. Well, it's not a music video. It's live. It could be a music video if <laughs> well, you're committing to that. It'll be a music video after where we can, after the live performance. So the last one, and this one is actually kind of a cool suggestion because uh, Taylor said 19.2, which is on Crave. So actually it's a Canadian made show. It was only around for a couple seasons, but it stars, it's like a, I think it's based in Montreal, like a, a cop show, but it stars, oh, what's the guy's name? Jared Kiso, who's the, the main guy and the creator of Letter Kenny. So that's what he did right before that. Um, it actually is a, a really good show. I think if if you remember the show Flashpoint, it's oh, that yes. that one in Flashpoint are two of like the best Canadian action shows I've seen in a while. But the other guy in 192, this is gonna go into a bit of conversation, is playing Uncle Phil in this new Fresh Prince reboot, which did anyone watch the trailer for that? Because they basically Riverdaled Fresh Prince, and I don't know how I feel about it. I didn't see the trailer. I just uh, read some headlines about how the new Fresh Prince is the same story of Will going 
from Philly to Bel Air, but it's it's like a one hour like drama. It's yeah. not it's not a comedy. It's not a sitcom. I'm oh. sure there's some funny parts, but it's oh. it's not even no. It's and it's, it's set in modern day, so it's river like it's what Riverdale did is where Riverdale right. took the Archie comics and put this dark Make twist it on dark, it. I just yeah. hope it's not as fucking hokey as Riverdale because even the trailer, like you look at the the actors in it and stuff, it looks like it's got potential, but it, it's definitely it's a reboot of Fresh Prince, but it's you're not going to get what Fresh Prince was. Okay. So that was our, our pretty lengthy list. Again, a good uh, good response from that one. Did anyone have anything on there? One show that wasn't mentioned that you absolutely think people need to watch next? Uh, one I just finished, it's uh, The Shrink Next Door with uh, Will Ferrell and Paul Rudd. It's a based on a true story. It's on Apple Plus. And it's about how this shrink takes advantage of this guy who has a lot of money. And it's just like this mini series and there's eight or 10 episodes. Just it's not their normal like ha ha comedy shows that they do. It's it's more like a yeah I guess it's more of a dramedy. It's a it's it's a dark comedy I guess. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just kind of nice to see those two in a different kind of out of, out of their element. I've never even heard of that, so that's why I'm glad we're doing this exercise. Hey, he just said he had Apple TV Plus, so there you go, Ted. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mine I've watched a hundred times and you guys have all watched it. Uh, but if you haven't watched it, Entourage is by far my favorite show. One that I now just fall asleep to at night because I've watched it so many times and I'm sure everyone has their shows, whether it's friends or whatever else to fall asleep to. But if you haven't watched it, I think season seven kind of sucks when when Vinny goes off the deep end. But the movie- Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. The, there's a and, guy named Vinny in it. And there's a movie afterwards that's uh, really good too, so- that's one you could get into for quite a, a long period of time. Yeah, you know what? There was a ton that were that weren't said um, that I'm surprised about, but I won't get into that. Mine's a little maybe off the beaten path, maybe not, but uh, I would say that '70s show. They took it off Netflix about a year ago, and oh. I was pretty bummed just because uh, I, I watched that since high school, and I love that one. And and those who listen to the podcast know I love my nostalgia, but mm-hmm. I just love the the idea, to be honest, of growing up in a time like we did when there was no internet or cell phones or just the start of it. And the 70s obviously was way, well before that, but it just brings me back to a more simpler time. And I always laugh. I've watched it a lot that whole season, and uh, I'm just waiting for it to come back on a streaming service somewhere soon. So I don't know if it's happening or not, but there's supposed to be a reboot too, like a 90s one where like- Yeah, I can't remember the time period. I think it is the 90s, but it's it's Eric and Donna's kid spends the summer with Red and Kitty and it's actually like the Red and Kitty- like oh, right. da- yeah so yeah. <laughs> i mean red red is um he's one of the all-time tv dads oh. in my opinion and so the fact that that him and kitty are both kind of back in it uh, i'm definitely going to watch at least the first couple i did i think 2 years ago i watched start to finish that 70s shows i don't think fox like was ever really great at making like real smash hits but that one i remember they did like that 80s show that lasted like 3 episodes yeah. so hopefully this one is good but that's a good one aaron i know you also binge a lot so I I don't know if you can pick just one. I will do not. Do not say Yellowstone. I will not, but I have two and I'm sorry. I read the text message. I still have two. Uh, first one, Schitt's Creek. An absolute, incredibly show, uh, incredible show. So much so that I walked down the aisle to Noah Reed's Simply the Best. It's that good. And then the second one, Fleabag. If you have not watched Fleabag on Prime, it's two seasons. It is British. It is Phoebe Waller-Bridge. It is perfection every single moment, every Every single shot, every single episode. Wow. Get on it. That is quite the endorsement. Fleabag. Okay. So this one, and honestly, I just finished watching this and I'm already re-watching it. And I'm so mad that no one ever really told me to watch this show. But The Good Place is maybe the best comedy I've ever seen. And maybe it's just because it's fresh in my mind. And that, I remember seeing like Ted Danson's in it, Kristen Bell. It's again, the the creator of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, you know, and and those NBC shows. So you get a lot of the same like recurring actors and, and stuff in there. But it's just, a, it's a brilliant concept. I don't know of anyone else. I think Aaron has seen yeah. it. I don't really want to spoil a lot, but it's just uh, it deals with the afterlife, but just... It's a beautifully crafted oh, show. It is funny. It is heartfelt. It is it is wonderful. And it's almost like therapy a little bit because it, it's all about being a good person and ethics and sometimes like the moral dilemma and, and stuff like that. So it's really smart. It's also, it's really funny. It's got the lowbrow humor and, and honestly, probably the best series finale I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and it's only four seasons too. So they 
they they wrapped it up before it got basically turned into like a cartoon mm-hmm. version of itself. And Ted Danson is is just incredible <sighs> in it. So that is my number one recommendation. And I, I hope anyone who watches it enjoys it even half as much as I did because I thought it was unbelievable. So that is it for Deer Call. Another one, I think the next Deer Call, I almost just need to ask people what our next deer call should be maybe make my life a little easier for the next couple episodes. But at this point, we're almost done. Not really a great mystery of what we're going to do now. Uh, So it is time for another round, round five of Dustin versus Walsh. Dustin versus Walsh is brought to you by Travis Kletke, chartered professional accountant and partner at Swainson Alexander, located downtown Red Deer, building connection through exceptional service and trusted professionalism, one client at a time. Learn more at swainsonalexander.ca. I hope it doesn't sound like I farted halfway through because (laughs) there's a little bit of a couch, a leather couch wiggle. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I'm going to cut out this part explaining (laughs) the couch noise so people really just think you ripped ass right in the middle of a (laughs) Travis Kletke ad read. Yeah, the couch over here did that. (laughs) (laughs) So it is a dead heat 2-2 right now in Dustin versus Walsh in the best of seven. It's been a little while since we've done one. So really quickly, guys, remind everyone at home what's at stake here remind me too so i believe london walsh are are on a team here and ted and myself and the losers have to take the winners out for a a horse ride at heritage ranch uh, a horse carriage ride out for dinner after that and then out for a movie so hopefully god forbid this thing's over by the time our uh, oh, game's movie over, theaters but are open. Are they open still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well then, open. giddy up. We're we're still good. Giddy up. I like that because the uh, <laughs> horse, horse carriage. Right. So I'm gonna do another callback right to our first episode and what I believe was still one of Lund's favorite games when we played Alberta Man or Florida Man. I took real headlines. I think you can. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. So there's a lot of fake news out there, and in 2021, just like any other year, there's also a lot of ridiculous news that seems fake but isn't. So I just looked up some of the most wild headlines I could find from 2021. Some are real and some are from, some are, they're all real headlines, but some are from a satirical website, right? Like The Onion or anything. And Mm -hmm. some are real headlines. So really, it's just like Netflix or Prime or Pretend. Going to read it off to you. Aaron and Lund are going to take turns because they haven't seen the questions, so they don't know either uh, what's right or wrong. And all you have to do is say whether it's news or nonsense. So with that, let's get into... News or nonsense. Okay, Aaron, our first headline. Meet Mr. Gox, a crypto trading hamster who is out investing Warren Buffett. News or nonsense? Nonsense. That is real news. (laughs) According to NPR, a rodent named Mr. Gox has been outperforming his human investment wizard counterparts in the trading of cryptocurrency. Mr. Gox makes his selections by sprinting on a hamster wheel, which corresponds with a choice of investment. (laughs) That sounds a lot like luck. (laughs) Isn't that what the stock market is? Yeah. 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 All right. So one nothing for Dustin. Come on, Walsh. Pull it together. A Belgian farmer moved a stone and accidentally redrew Belgium's border with France. News or nonsense? Nonsense. News. Real news. This uh, The Erquilines border stone, I don't know how to say that, sat in place for more than 200 years before a farmer moved it to make way for his tractor, accidentally expanding Belgium's territory by 10,000 square feet. <laughs> nice. He, he moved that rock a long way. <laughs> He didn't. He only moved it like a foot. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah the, the the whole line. That's right. crazy. I see, I see. Yeah, <laughs> but the whole line on the map moved. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. Study eighty percent of baby boomer advice is to just suck it up. <laughs> I hope this is real. <laughs> Nonsense. News. That is fake news <laughs> from the Beaverton. So, like the Canadian online satire news or whatever. So, 2-1 for Dustin. Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina-scented candles inexplicably explodes. That's why I picked one for a reason. (laughs) Inexplicably. (laughs) Vagina. (laughs) Nonsense. You guys are different every time and you're alternating right answers every time. It is real news. So, a 50-year-old media consultant in London named Judy Thompson won a candle named Smells Like My Vagina, made by Gwyneth Paltrow. It's a $75 vagina scented candle. Uh, She lit it, it exploded and engulfed her apartment in flames. 
she okay? Yes. Good. Gwyneth Paltrow or... Judy. Oh, Judy? Yeah, Judy's fine. Okay, good. Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina will never be the same, however. <laughs> it's sad that I knew that was real because I knew she made those fucking candles. Yeah, but you knew Yeah, I, kn- I knew she made oh. those candles. I, say, I knew it was real because mine exploded too, <laughs> right? <laughs> I guess when you're famous, you can sell pretty much anything. Yeah. That's like the, the girl who retired off of selling jarred farts. No, she went to the hospital. Yeah. She's unretired now. Oh, is it? Oh. She, she's back selling? No, like <laughs> she, she went to the hospital for her farts. Yeah, yeah she was eating she was eating too many like she too was much eating protein like straight chili and protein oh. and yeah. <laughs> she had she had yeah, she had to Why? retire from it. She does she no longer sells her farts. So she's wow. retired. Yeah, but I don't think I think she's got a new job now oh. as in like, right. she's oh. retired. I thought she for, retired like she is done because she made enough money. No, you know, no, she probably made enough Injury. money. I think Injury. she, I think she made yeah. money. And Aaron, you're letting your farts go to waste <laughs> on the couch over there. Come on, bottle <laughs> those bad boys up. <laughs> you want us to talk about your hair instead? <laughs> yes, yes, please. Okay, go ahead. Two, two. <laughs> Teleconferencing pastor requests any worshippers currently speaking in tongues go on mute. <laughs> <laughs> News nonsense. That is fake news from the onion. Not a boy, Walsh. <sighs> that one too. so could have been real, though. I just can't believe you guys have split every time. Local man pulls fire fire alarm to avoid friends discovering he doesn't like Succession. That's actually the other series. I was going to really say. Into. I can't believe no one said yeah. that. Yeah, I'd highly recommend Succession. By the way. News. Nonsense. Walsh takes a 4-2 lead. That is also yes. fake news from the Beaverton. So you have 4-2, Walsh. Just hold on. Yeah, I got him. A New Zealand city council fires its official wizard after 20 years of service. <laughs> Please be real. Please be real. <laughs> news. news. What well, that is, real news. Yeah, I know. So way. buckle up for this. When Ian Brackenberry Channel first appeared in the town square of his town in New Zealand in 1976, locals were befuddled and bemused. Standing on a ladder while dressed in a cloak and pointy hat, the self-described wizard addressed passersby and cast spells. <laughs> His true legacy began in 1998 when he accepted the city's offer to become the official state-appointed wizard of Christ Church. So for nearly a quarter century, he earned an annual tax-free salary of $11,000 from the city until October 2021 when they terminated his contract. You had 11 grand to be a wizard? Yeah. <laughs> did they re- did they We're replace some? Like, is there a new wizard in town? That I, that I don't question. know. <laughs> I think they just finally decided they could make more money selling and farts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. And so that actually is the end. I saw that and that was the inspiration for this whole game was seeing that headline. <laughs> Thinking that can't be real and yeah. it was real. A study finds strong correlation between playing loud music in public and having terrible taste in music. And Dustin, you need to at least tie Walsh here. Nonsense. Nonsense. That is fake news from the Beaverton. Dustin but it's true. Guy. Generally. That's a hard study yeah. to conduct. It's not a yeah. real, it's a true <laughs> thing, but not a real headline. Yeah. So now Walsh, all you have to do is, this is number nine, so all you have to do is tie. Hiker lost for 24 hours, ignored calls from rescuers because of unknown number. News. news. That is real news. I knew that one. Yeah, I Did you know that, that one? Headline. A hiker lost on a mountain in Colorado ignored repeated calls from rescuers, later explaining that they had been unfamiliar with the phone number, authorities said. And the person apparently didn't know that a search team had even been looking for them. This is the Canada Revenue Agency. <laughs> yeah. There is a search warrant out for your arrest. Well, exactly. What is the harm? Like, <laughs> I get it. Like when you're watching Succession at home and you don't want to be disturbed and okay, it'll go to voice. If you're lost in the woods and someone is calling you. He was legitimately lost too. It's not like he was out hiking and didn't really? let people know. He was actually lost and still didn't answer his working phone. Well, I was just, I why just. Why didn't he make a phone Yes, phone? I was just <laughs> thinking, why would you not just call someone? Yeah. This is where Darwin's theory really needs to kick in sometimes and it's yes oh i'm not going to answer this i'm just going to keep being lost (laughs) oh man all right ted you want us to read the last few yeah oh yeah kevin you won (laughs) hey three two lee so might as well just just do number 10 a london youtuber who swore off men found love 
with her alien abductor. News. Well, yeah, okay, Dustin, so you really did only lose by one. Because despite having beauty and talent on her side, Abby Bella's year began with a string of bad dates. However, oh yeah, you did lose by two. (laughs) Because math. However, However, after the London actress joked online about wanting an alien to abduct her, she got more than she bargained for and claims she fell in love with an alien from the Andromeda galaxy. Wow. It's a sexy galaxy. <laughs> I think you got about seven or ten, though. Like, it's not like I... No, you, no, did, that you, was, did, you probably did average, yeah. Yeah, I think I got about half. About I, I, I think it was seven to five would have been the final tally or something like that, so... But when in doubt, you just got to think, like, this world's really fucked up right yeah. now. Yeah. And people are doing dumb stuff. So, Wallace, congratulations on your big win, Dustin. That's I think that's three losses in a row, actually, is it not? It is, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was up two Walsh has got okay. momentum. Now you just need to win two in a row, so no, it's doable. Six. You can do it. No, we can't. Yeah, and that, that is pretty much it. Uh, very briefly, final thoughts. Yeah, I think uh, look forward to you adding this down to about a quarter of what we talked about tonight and yeah, we'll see you boys in two weeks. You know, it was great to get back together with you guys and on the mics and it's been a little while and uh, I think we had some really good ideas from our, our meeting last week and just looking forward to uh, continuing to implement and make this a uh, great podcast and thanks to everyone for your continued support. Uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to be back in the studio with you guys and doing this for another year and excited to see what 2022 brings us and um, it's got to be, uh, no, I'm not going to jinx myself. It's going to be a great year. That's all I'll say. Uh, I'll say this. I'm fucking jacked for the new year. Uh, <laughs> we have we have so many things planned uh, that are on the horizon. Uh, we have so much exciting stuff that's coming your way. And I can't wait to show you guys what we have in store for you. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss our next episode, which is in two weeks from now. So if you haven't already, go go uh, download the podcast, all, all past 22 podcasts, and go to spotify google play and anywhere else even 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 youtube i mean we have a few videos there but we need to get those views up so uh subscribe uh, subscribe swipe up that was incredible see that's 2022 is off to a great start lund brought the positivity really saved me a, a bunch of words so yeah thank you everyone again you know for listening up to now up to episode 22 and for sticking with us thank you again to jenna and amy from bullskit comedy for the great interview thank you as always to ryan and riley for being here with us letting us use the space to keep on doing this and thank you as always to our presenting sponsor bose bar and stage so yeah i think the only thing you missed is uh, if you're listening on you're on apple podcasts Give us, if you think we deserve a five-star review, give us a review and yeah, Lund, take us home. Yeah, give us a five-star, you wuss. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, I don't want to end it there, but we will. 